What's up guys? So today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a basic landscape. This landscape in particular has a lot of trees and plants in it and I'll be giving you a rundown on how to paint these elements. I've painted some foliage on here earlier for my other video on how to paint large groups of plants, which I left a link for in the description. And so in this video we will be painting a landscape around them. I'm starting off painting the background sky. The sky has a very slight gradient effect where it's lighter to the left and darker to the right. I have a light and desaturated magenta mixture here on the right and it transitions to a very light orange color to the left. You can be creative with the sky color here. It doesn't necessarily have to be blue. I just want to go for that Thomas Kincaid effect here with the background. Once I finish that part, I start painting the background trees. Try to desaturate the color as much as you can here because the way that it contrasts with the sky color, even the slightest hint of green still shows off pretty decently. These clusters of leaves should vary in shape, size, and color because I want to have a variety of trees. These leaves I'm painting will be the ones furthest away from the viewer and so to simulate that effect in a painting, they will be more desaturated so they can help bring out more of the color for the closer layer of leaves. Once I finish that part, I start to refine these leaves. I add some more detailed clusters in some spots and some of them I dry brush into the background. This is the part where if you see any large or sharp edges of brush strokes, you will loosen them up by adding some smaller chunks of leaves. Spend a few minutes doing this. Don't rush this process. It's easy to think that just because something is in the background that you should be careless about it, but that's not true at all. Since we are having so many of these trees here, we will have to use different degrees of contrast depending on the depth and density. Notice how we have lots of negative space here between all those leaf clusters we have just painted. Let's fill up some of these open areas with some more leaf clusters, except a little darker this time to add some more density. And remember, painting trees and pretty much all the other plants involves layering and stacking the next one, and then leaving part of the previous layers visible. Also, if you do find yourself filling up too much space in one area, that's fine because you can always go back and paint some more of that negative space. You can really start to see some of these trees come into formation now. Let's focus on this red tree. What I'm trying to do here is create a sense of separation between this tree and that green one to the left. Since this tree does have some distance from us, I'm not going all the way with the contrast, just another small step darker. As you're painting these, remember to keep them diverse in size and shape. Also, side note, notice how we have some green color in between the red here, indicating more trees behind this red one. Sometimes it's good to do this to create more variety instead of having open space between the leaves. So now we have a pretty well established background and have an idea of what's going on with this landscape. Let's start to add more contrast in these trees to indicate more separation between some of them. As I paint these dark spots, I use diverse sizes and shapes to keep them as random as possible. Some of them I gently dry brush into the background, and some of them I leave alone and allow them to stay sharp and defined. You'll be using many of the same principles often here with painting trees. It's just a matter of time and patience to get everything down on here accurately. This green tree cluster here in the middle and the ones to the left will be the closest ones, so the colors and contrast here will be the most dynamic. However, that purple tree and aquamarine one in the back will be the furthest, so we will have much less contrast than those. With these background trees, I'm going to refine some more with the leaves coming out. I'm using a lighter version of the color of the tree. I'm using some horizontal brushing here, and ever so lightly I'm applying these small clusters of leaves. I will come back here at a later time to get more work done, adding some more negative space in some areas, as well as smoothing over the textures. Now let's start adding the tree trunks and branches. This is probably one of the easier parts, but at the same time it's easy to make a mistake here because you can end up making the branches too thick in one spot and you'll have to go back and correct it. Don't use brown directly, but make it desaturated with some gray and in some spots black. Also, when you're painting these, think in terms of dimensions. Which part of the branch will be overlapped by the leaf clusters? If you paint all the branches over the leaves, you're just going to have to go back again and apply more overlap of leaves covering them. 
paint some of these branches and tree trunks in short segments so that way they'll be already inside some of the tree leaf clusters. Keep the brush as wet as possible when you're painting the smaller and thinner ones. Make sure that they get smaller and thinner as they go outward. Okay, so before we go back and start elaborating more on the next layer of leaves, let's do some cleaning up of the background. Some of these spots look pretty rough and need some smoothing over. Look for spots that look too grainy, especially where any transitions are, and smooth over those spots. You can do that with some dry brushing. I'm refining some of this negative space with using the original sky color, creating a glow in some of these leaf clusters. In some other areas, you could add some more background leaves behind these trees if you want to. It's up to you. Take this opportunity right now to go over any spots that you feel that are unfinished. Some other spots, you could add some more detailed shadows inside the leaves if you want to. Now we can start adding more layers of leaves. Since we do have a large amount of green trees, I want to use a variety of green hues as well as different textures. Let's work on this green tree here in the middle. With this tree, I want to get some very fine detail in the leaves. I'm using a detailer brush and I'm using a light green mixture here. I'm using small dots here because obviously the leaves are going to be small and I want to make them cluster very close together. It's a good idea to have variety with the way you paint the leaves on the trees. Sometimes you're going to use larger brushing and yet other times like this one, go for something more precise. Also keep in mind, because it's really important. Don't just scatter a bunch of paint on here expecting a tree to come up all of a sudden. When you're painting these leaves, notice how I'm painting these dots in clusters, almost like in these spherical shapes. Be creative with how you group together these leaves. As in real life, trees will have clusters of leaves in various shapes and sizes. This tree is going to have some oval and spherical shapes when the leaves get grouped together. And so as I go upward onto the top part of these leaf clusters, my green color will get lighter. As you're painting these leaves, every so often pick a few of them and gently dry brush them into the background so they'll be less defined but have a more ethereal and misty appearance. Combining this technique along with painting in a precise manner helps balance out the elements in the painting to prevent it from looking too stiff and rigid. Okay, now let's move on to something a little easier. I'm switching the green color to something that has a little bit more blue in it, just for the sake of variety. The brushing is going to be bigger here, but the same principles that I just talked about still apply. However, notice here how my brushing is horizontal. When you're painting leaves like this, keep this in mind because from our perspective, the way the leaves come together will tend to look like this. This area is a darker area, and so keep these leaves at a relatively darker value. That's the thing about painting landscapes. You need to pay attention to multiple things that are going on in the painting, even though it seems like you're doing one thing at a time. How's the overall color value? Is there enough contrast, or does this part look too flat? Let's leave this part alone for now and come back later to finish it. Now I'm going to work on this tree. The leaf shapes are the same, but I'm going back to the green paint mixture I originally used on the first tree. Notice how there's less contrast here, but here we will have a lighter range of color values. Don't forget to dry brush some of these leaves. Also, don't go overboard with painting these highlights, because it's so easy to do that when you're painting the final layers of a tree, and this is especially true if you do a careless job with the foundational layers you will end up overcompensating with the highlights and the tree will end up looking flat and boring. So the same thing going on here with this red tree, except of course there's less contrast here. Remember that this tree is at a distance, so make sure to keep that contrast low by not making any paint mixture too bright or too dark. So now let's take a break from painting these trees and get a pathway going here. When it comes to painting a trail or road, it's always good to have it curved or be in an S shape because it helps add to the aesthetics of a landscape. It's one of those composition rules for traditional painting. I want to create a separation here where the pathway bends at the horizon. There's going to be a group of plants in front of that red tree that I will paint in a lighter color, and I want to create some contrast with the group of plants I'll be making to the left, closer to us. Using gradients and landscapes helps to indicate distance, as well as adding to the overall aesthetics of the landscape. Pay attention to the left of the path. When the edge of the path meets the grass, you're going to have various things there like grass and the beginning of some foliage. On the right of the path, I want to keep it simple. Since we have so much going on already, with the trees and plants, I'll need a few clean areas that don't really have anything, just some grass and a few miscellaneous rocks. 
It's a good idea to have an area or two like this in a painting so that you could have a so-called rest area for the eyes, especially if the painting does have a lot of detail in it. I'm using a slightly darker color scheme in the beginning of the road, and the color is going to get lighter as it moves up. So after the base coat is on there, I deviate from this base color and add some more variety of brown on here. It's important to have variety of color, especially when you're painting a flat surface because it prevents it from looking dull and lifeless. Using gradients like this helps a great deal, and I will use the same effect with the grass here as well. Then I begin to add texture. This is going to be pretty similar to the way I've shown you earlier when I was painting the trees. You've got the baseline color, then add some texture and shadow, then add the light parts and the highlights last. The difference here, however, is that this trail isn't like a tree. It's flat and so you must paint it as such. Notice how when I'm painting the textures, they're horizontal and kind of more linear. There's more fine detail here so that you can use both the small detail brush and the fan brush here if you want to. You're also going to be using more dry brushing here because you'll actually want to smudge some of this paint together to create that rugged surface. And so once you do that, you could switch to a smaller brush and add smaller, more refined spots. After that part, you do the highlights. Switch to a lighter mixture of color and you do the same thing here. Never break, always fight. Here on this left side, I don't want it completely empty, so I'm going to add some rocks as well as beginning the formation of a plant. I'll add real quick the foundations for these. Also, notice how the pathway looks finished, yet it looks flat because there is no indentation from where the edge of the path meets the grass. Let's fix that. I got my mixture again with some desaturated brown, and so I go along the edges and get this painted on here. As I paint this, I err on the side of making this line pretty thick, because I will blend some of it along with the pathway and the grass. Then I start to blend the edges of the path with this line. The way I'm doing that is getting a dark gray mixture on the brush and very lightly applying it here and dry brushing it on some spots. From looking at this, the light source is going to be coming from the left. Once that's done, let's get some grass painted. The base coat is a desaturated green, just like how I painted the trees. However, I'm using the gradient effect so that it'll be lighter as you go more towards the center. It should draw the eye towards the focal point of the painting. And then, you guessed it. I applied the textures. Since this grass is going to be shallow, I will be using short vertical brushing to indicate where the shadows are going to be. So using a fan brush, or a detailer brush, take your time adding these dark smudges. Once that's done, I use a green mixture that's slightly lighter than the original base color. I'm using the small detailer brush, and ever so carefully I start painting the grass blades. I'm using short vertical brushing. Keep the brush as wet as possible and apply the brush very lightly. If you do end up adding too much paint or making it too smudgy, that's fine because you can easily go back and correct it. Just repaint some dark vertical spots and repeat this process. When you're painting grass, keep the brushing short, but there are times when you could get some longer grass blades in a few areas. Take your time with this. You'll end up going back to the palette frequently to reapply a fresh mixture here. The one mistake that I have to admit here is that I didn't use the best paintbrush for this. I highly recommend you use a soft bristle detailer that is long, not short like this one. Long bristle brushes help better with painting long lines more accurately. Let's go to this interesting area over here. I want to make this area have a lot of contrast since we have the pathway vanishing here as well as these plants here indicating a strong sense of separation. The further away something is, the less saturated the color is going to be. I'm going to use this trend of colors in my mixtures here as I paint this cluster of plants. And remember, just because objects are further away doesn't take away from the importance of doing a good job with them. The plants here to the left will be really dark, so be careful with the way you paint the layers here so you don't have too many highlights. I finish off all the other parts here and add a few more miscellaneous items on the right side. It's important to paint things that help lead the eye towards the center of the painting, because otherwise if you have too much open space on the edge, it tends to lead the eye away from the focal point. Let's focus on these rocks now. These will be similar to the way we painted the pathway. I'm going to lightly feather in a few different shades of brown on here. We will diversify some of this base color, add textures, and then highlights. However, the difference here is that this is a three-dimensional object, 
and so we will need to focus on color value by shading properly and creating transitions. Once I'm happy with the color, I focus now on adding the basic values where the shadows are going to be and how they transition. Remember, work from big to small. Once I get the main shadows and values established, then I get some textures down. Same thing as with everything else, just get some dark smudges down in different shapes and sizes. And then last, I work on the highlights. Make sure that the far left side has slightly more dark value than the rest because it's at the edge of the painting. And remember, objects at the edges should be more obscured. This is one of those landscape composition rules. Then we can create some overlap with getting some grass painted next to the rocks. That should be it for this part. So let's go back up and finish painting these trees. Real quick, before I do anything with the leaves, let's add some finishing touches to the branches and tree trunks. The light will be coming from the left, so add some various mixtures of brown here. Don't go overboard with these highlights, as many of these sections will still be obscured by the leaves and their shadows. So back to the trees. I know I left off from the red tree, which needs some more work. Same thing as last time, using low contrast and painting it with the intent of it being more in the background. When you're close to finishing the painting, look for any unfinished areas. Remember the importance of being aware of multiple things. How is the overall contrast and brightness? Are there any areas that look too flat that need more highlights, or vice versa, need to be toned down in value? Are there any spots that look too rigid, and maybe you can add some more smoothing over with the dry brushing? Are there any grainy spots that need more polishing? Don't be afraid to redo any areas. And besides, we're using acrylics, so this whole process can be really fast. I think that's it for this painting. I showed you many different things here in this video, with creating a basic layout all the way to the painting of fine detail in the landscape. I know there's a lot of topics that I covered here, and so I hope that this video can serve you as a reference for your future painting endeavors. This painting is one of many different landscapes you could come up with, but many of the principles are consistent amongst other projects that you could do. I'm looking forward to creating a whole variety of landscapes in the future and showing you how these principles work together. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.